So finally, we get to talk about an instrument known as ICP. And I've included it in the AA lecture series because it's very similar to the AA and AE instrument. But it does the job so much better than AA and AE possibly can. All right. So the reason that um, we're talking about it now is because an ICP machine. So ICP. Well, it stands for inductively coupled plasma. And the ICP instrument will measure metals. And it measures metals just like an AA would, except this measures metals at the part per billion and sometimes part per trillion level, no matter the metal. Okay, so that's the wonderful thing about an ICP instrument. This instrument measures the metals just like AA does, but it measures them at a lower concentration because the machine is more sensitive. The reason it's more sensitive, one of the reasons at least, is because it uses an actual plasma torch. Yes, this is the fourth state of matter. Solid, liquid, gas, plasma. This uses a plasma torch and this thing can get super hot and we know that the temperature is very important when it concerns the AA machines. So this very hot plasma torch will free up more metals and this machine can pick out and see and count a smaller number of metals than the AA or AE can. So the ICP system, uh, this actually needs its own lecture series because this is a instrument. Uh, this is not really an attachment anymore, right? This is a full-blown standalone instrument. Some of the older versions took up basically half the room because they were so large, but the footprint of them is getting smaller and smaller nowadays. But this instrument measures metals just like AAAE, and it measures them at a super low concentration, so that way we can determine if anything is present at all in the sample, yes or no. Okay, so with the ICP, uh, the temperature of the plasma torch can go upwards of 8,000 K. Uh, keep in mind that the temperatures of the acetylene flame and the nitrous flame are much lower. We're talking like 2,500 K for those. So this plasma torch is again much, much hotter and it has to be in order to be that sensitive. Uh, typically, an ICP is coupled to a mass spectrometer, but it doesn't have to be. So we have two variants of the machine, an ICP MS, and the MS stands for a mass spectrometer. And the mass spectrometer does a very good job in basically providing us formula weights of the metals that it sees. So it can kind of tell us, hey, I found something. And then in addition to that, it can say, well, this is what I think it is. Because I've got a weight of the atom. And if I look on the periodic table, none of the atoms really have the same weight. So it uses the formula weight of the metal in order to identify it. So that does a very good job. It saves me some time in the laboratory. It takes some guesswork out of the thing, but they're also very, very expensive, and they're very expensive to buy and to maintain. So this is high maintenance here, and this is something that I want to think about if I have to use and operate an ICP MS system. For that reason, there's another option out there, and that's an ICP OES system. And OES stands for Optical Emission Spectroscopy. Uh, think of this as kind of like AE. It gives off a signal, and this signal that it gives off, the emitted light, is used to help identify the metals that are present. So I've got two versions. The ICP OES system 
is the cheapest one. I'm going to put two dollar signs here instead of three. Uh, and it can still do part per billion levels. The ICPMS is way more expensive to buy and to maintain. It can do part per billion and part per trillion very easily. And it can really ID at the same time. I don't really need a standard in order to figure out what is present. I just need standards if I'm making a calibration curve later on in the analysis part. Well, what's the difference here? Uh, the ICP OES systems, the last time I checked, they were around 85,000 to 115,000 per instrument. Uh, and this is one of the reasons that we had not had one in quite some time. And then finally, with the ICP MS system, you know that's going to be more expensive because I've already told you that. And these things can go around 250k, so that's the price of a small house, all the way to 500k um, is typically the ballpark figure depending on the bells and whistles that you want on the machine. So these by no means are very easy to get, to obtain, to maintain, and to keep running. Uh, this is some money that you're going to have to sink in to this uh, field of analysis if this is what you want. All right. Uh, the good news is that our program does have an ICP system. Uh, as of uh, the to date, when this video is being recorded, the ICP system is getting installed. Uh, we have no clue on when the installation of this machine is actually going to be final, uh, but we do have this machine sitting downstairs in the basement of our laboratory building, uh, the end building, uh, waiting for basically a countertop into some exhaust to come through. Uh, so uh, we do have the machine, we just need it up and running. And in order to do that, we need some modifications in our lab to house it. So with that said, we are now finished with atomic absorption and atomic emission as far as lecture theory goes. Uh, if you watch any more videos, it will probably be due to software videos or maybe a little bit on how to do data analysis from the machine. Uh, but if you're in our class, you won't get these through a video. You'll get these through in-person training and laboratory exercises. So if you're watching this for competition purposes, you'll probably will see more videos coming your way. If you're in our class, though, well, these videos are going to be substituted for in-person lectures that you get when you show up to class and actually see us to work on the AA and AE instrument. So until then... Uh, I'll see you next time, and uh, have some popcorn, have some drinks. You've just celebrated a series of 20-plus videos on AAAE.